is just the perfect spot to barbecue. There's something about spots like this that just really are inspiring to me. Beautiful scenery, fresh, clean ingredients. For our barbecue today, I've got this beautiful tri-tip. Look, it's still covered in a lot of fat and a lot of silver skin. So first thing that we're going to do is clean this up before we start cooking. On top, we have a big fat cap. We want to leave that on, but we also have some loose silver skin here. That is what we're going to take off. On the bottom, we also have a lot of fat and silver skin. We want to expose the meat here because we want to add flavor to this part. Let's start on top. I'm taking my filleting knife and working my way through that silver skin, slicing underneath, taking off as little fat as I can. At the same time, making sure that we get all that silver skin off because it's not going to taste good when we start eating our steaks. Most of what we sliced off is silver skin with a little bit of fat. It actually serves no other purpose than seasoning your skillet, for instance. Hey, say hello to my little friend. The reason that I chose to cook tri-tip today, because it's one of my favorite cuts of meat, it's like a picanha. You have a big fat cap and you have big beefy flavors. But at the same time, there's much more marbling in this cut than that you get from a picanha. Actually, it's even better than a picanha. And at the same time, it's cheaper. We ended up with a beautiful trimmed bottom of our tri-tip. Look at that. All that clean meat with a little bit of intramuscular fat. And here, we still have a little bit of top fat. We don't want to take that off. I just want to leave that on. Now, if you think this is challenging, don't worry about it. Just give it a try, do it a few times, but make sure you get a cut of tri-tip that has that fat on, so you can decide how much of fat you want to leave on or want to take off. On the top, we have that beautiful fat cap. Look at it. It's going to be crispy, it's going to be tasty, perfect for a barbecue. Now, of course, before we start grilling, we're going to fire up our Joe Jr. We're going to put in some Camargo Big Block, few fire starters, light them up and let the barbecue come up to temperature. Our charcoal is hot and ready to go. So what we're going to do is close our bottom vent to almost half a finger open. Add a big chunk of smoke wood, dump it right in there and then close the lid, open the top vent with only the holes open. The aim is to dial in our barbecue at a smoking temperature of around 110 degrees Celsius, which is 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Look, the smoke is already coming. Since we're going to be smoking, I'm going to put in our heat deflector. The grill grate. And now we're going to put on our tri-tip without seasoning it first. There we go. It fits perfectly on a Kamado Joe Jr. Perfect fit. Time to close the lid and wait for it to smoke. Let it come up to temperature. We're looking for a core temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. We're getting closer and closer to that 54 degrees Celsius. Time to take a tri-tip off the grill. Look at that thing. Nice and golden brown. You can clearly see that it's been smoking and picking up smoke, which is one of the most important parts of the reverse sear technique. In the step that we just went through, we let the meat slowly come up to temperature. And at the same time, we gave it the opportunity to pick up smoke. And that smoke flavor is also important about barbecue. We want it to have extra flavor. And that's what we did right here. A tri-tip first needs to rest. We can't slice into this. First of all, we want a crust on top. So we need some flames. We need some salt on there just to get it crispened up. And second of all, our barbecue is not at the temperature just yet. So we're going to take out the heat deflector and the grill grate and open up the vents. We want a barbecue to come up to a temperature of around 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool. Is that your cat behind you? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay away from the meat, brother. 
Morrison and I just beefed up security. We're just gonna carve up our fat cap. Just get in there. Real careful, we don't wanna slice into the meat. Oh, look at that. With the weight of the knife, it's just falling through the fat cap. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. Now we're going for the diamond shape. Of course, we're slicing into it and some of the juices of that fat are already dropping out, but look at how good this looks. Now we'll sprinkle on salt that will help crispen up our skin. So what we wanna do is we wanna get it in there in between the fat, otherwise it's just gonna fall off. Don't worry on getting too much on there because most of it will drop off when we start rendering off that fat. And while we're waiting for our steak to rest, maybe we can make a salsa. First, we're gonna chop fine one clove of garlic, then one shallot, 10 cherry tomatoes, one pointy red bell pepper. Also gonna chop fine some fresh parsley and five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. A pinch of salt, some fresh ground black pepper. There we go. Now, toss that all up. Toss the salad. Come on, Marshall, don't be like that. You know what it means. Now that we've got all the preparations done, let's start grilling off our tri-tip. Let's put the grill grate back in. There we go. Look at this beauty. First, I wanna sear off the bottom. It only needs a little bit of sear, then we're going to flip it over to the crust. If we're starting out with that crust, that fat cap, then it's not gonna work because you get a big inferno and you wanna prevent that. You wanna take it off before you get these giant flames burning up your tri-tip. Letting the fat touch the flames can only last just for a real short period. Otherwise you get that burning fat and that doesn't taste good. You wanna keep it as short as possible while crispening up that fat anyway. Now take a look at this beautiful tri-tip. Man, we sure got some really good crisp on that fat cap. Listen to this. It's really, really crispy. And at the same time, we got that juicy inside. Only one thing left to do. You know it, we're gonna slice it up. Wait a minute, Marshall. Before we start slicing into it, maybe I should explain that it consists of three parts. Look at it. Here. The grains are running in this direction, and over here, the grains are running in that direction. And then the point is running in another direction. So while slicing into that, we gotta take that into consideration. There we go. Looking for it. Perfect. Look at how juicy that is on the inside. We'll slice up this part first. Oh my God. Perfect one slice cuts. It looks really good, right? <laughs> now, I'm just putting that tri-tip together so you can actually see how we cut it up into multiple sections. You can see that we slice this part with a different direction than the other part. And that way we sliced against the grain, getting these perfect cuts. You guys all know how I like to plate up my cutting board. And to this one, we're gonna add some chips. You might think, what? Why are you adding chips? But I like to add these sweet chili. Well, you all know the brand. There we go. Tortilla chips. It works so well with our tri-tip. Look at these colors. Now it's time to put on our salsa and brighten this plate up even further. And now it's time for my favorite part of this show. The tasting test. <laughs> First, of course, our tri-tip. There we go. Mm. Oh. Mm. Our tri-tip has a lot of smoke flavor. Fantastic. This is what I love about doing the reverse sear. You get that smoke flavor, then finally you sear it off, put some salt on that fat cap, and it almost completely dissolves the fat cap and turns it crisp. And what you can see right now is something that the picanha doesn't have. The picanha has under the fat cap that thick silver skin. Tri-tip doesn't have that, which makes it much easier to bite into and to digest. Now let's try it with a little bit of salsa and some chips. Mm. That's just ridiculous. Tri-tip is one of my favorite cuts. 
and cooking it reverse sear with that smokiness and that crispy fat cap is absolutely beautiful. I love making it like this and plating it up with some chips, some salsa. The acidity of the salsa breaks down the fat of the tri-tip. Man, what more can you wish for? If you guys like your barbecue and you like tri-tip, then leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, big thank you to our patrons and our YouTube members. See you guys next time. Until then, eat smarkly and keep on grilling.